Hello. Does it look weird? I'm not sure. Uh, hello. Oh, you're seeing a little bit of my window. I don't want that. Not window. Uh, mirror. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be quite interesting because this time I'm gonna press 2 instead of 5. And my camera has disappeared. Hi. Hello. Okay. Uh, today we will try coding. We're ba going back to the roots. We're gonna unmute this and okay so uh, i want to make a translation tool uh, the the current name is sl translation magizmo which i really like i think i will go with it and uh, yeah it basically you will just have like a visualization of what you're translating and you'll have a list of every single entry and you will actually see a live preview instead of having you know because currently in sl hold up okay the infinite is patching fantastic Browse local files. Uh, yeah, currently in SL, uh, this is how it works. So, for example, I go to English and then you just have a bunch of files. You go to Teams and have this file. So, yeah, if it's really... it's you, you can get lost. Okay? Especially when I made Operation Guide the translation because... Yeah, I, I, I cannot tell you anything. So, like, having that being just like even having the description of what this line is what this line is for or what this line is for that would be amazing and having a preview is even better and that's the idea so i will have a preview a list of every single entry i guess and then you'll be able to save it and hopefully i will also have a separate panel for effects because some people like uh, having you see how there's color here because you can color different parts of text some people do entire gradients that uh, every letter is a different color and it transitions to another one. Well, that could be an effect that you can apply. For example, that is the Z idea. So, new project. We're gonna go with Unity 2021.3 because I've used a slightly older version of that one. And it worked. I was quite surprised at how stable it was. So, let's hope the long term support version will be more supported because uh, if you don't know, I have quite the experience with long-term support because long-term support most of the time is even worse than non-long-term support. But hey, I Ricatello called everybody functioning individuals. Let's just hope that that's changed it. SL oh SL translation magizmo two uh, D. Mm -mm -mm. Everything seems fine. Okay, create project. And while it's creating, I'm gonna initialize a GitHub repository. For now, it will be private because I don't want people looking at me code while I'm working. Then later, you'll just be able to view everything. But for now, like, if I decide to just ditch the project, like, I, I want the power to just kind of like have it stashed and stuff. So I'm just saying, hey, okay, I'm just gonna fork it and make it. No. It's probably not. It's probably not a good. Uh, hold up, is SL? I can actually make. Oh yeah, hold up. Oh yeah, of course I can. SL uh, translation magizmo description. Nah, private. Sure. Git ignore. Nah. Create repository. Okay, now I have a link. Actually, you know what? We might actually change the music today. Oh, I didn't close all my browser tabs. Oh, no, I did. Okay, never mind. I just close my browser tabs because I don't want to... See, I don't want you to see it when I alt-tab. I want to, you know... Someone see... see like... I don't, I don't want any more... I don't want you to see, like, some kind of deep fake of... Very questionable things. Not sure if people still remember that when that happened. Okay, so setting up for me is actually because I've participated in so many game jams, like I'm already like really used to setting up the project. So, firstly, we will go to I can show you this. Like, why am I so scared? Unity projects. We'll go to. Um, I always copy it from Project Armor. Uh, project Armor, which is the SL clone. Mm, git ignore. So this is like a file that will tell you uh, Unity or not Unity. It will tell Git, which is like a application for managing 
Yeah, for making sure like uh, you back up things. So it tells you like, oh, ignore, you know, user settings because like that, these are my settings. I do not want to share my settings. And yeah, it's, it's, like ignore certain things that don't need to be shared. Uh, so we will now promptly just copy. Where, that, where do I have it? Project armor. Oh, wait, hold up. Uh, show in project. Yes, yes. Project armor. And we will just copy. Okay, dot git ignore. Uh, copy here. Now we will open SL translation magismo in git bash. I'm really sorry. This is, this is, I know. I will type in only a few commands. Uh, hold up, I need to do dash A, that's how we do it. Uh, git status, git commit, dash M, uh, first init, git, uh, I cannot push because I did uh, git remote add origin and then uh, paste this. Git push origin main. Okay, that's all the commands, okay? Do not be scared, do not be scared, guys, do not be scared, do not panic. Do not panic, and if I go here and I refresh this page. There we go. Okay, so now it's on the cloud. If I die, I will still, still not be able to access it. But if the computer dies, if my computer lights on fire and I lose all of the data, I have it online. Except that we do not have anything here. Anyways, uh, sample scene, we will call this scene... I normally call them game, but this is in a game. Main. Reload. Okay, so for this project we'll, we will be using QAsic, which is my little library for a lot of things. And we'll be using QAsic mainly because there's a lot of tools that help me with programming and UI work. And on top of that I want to use the input system, although I don't... I, yeah, I do not have the need for it. But it has a really cool feature which I've added quite recently, shortcuts. And I'm not talking like shortcuts in the editor, no, I'm talking like shortcuts in the game. So basically how it works is that if you have a shortcut, uh, you need to... And let's say for example Control s to save. So if I say Control shift s it won't, it won't trigger. But if I say Control s it has to be Control and s If I press any other button, it won't work. Yeah, it's cool. Anyways, QA sick. Oh boy, this is the hell of this. Mm, this is version old. Uh, exporting this is gonna be pain, isn't it? Git status. Ah, upload local. Let's call this prompt window add added prompt library window editor. Okay, now I have a QA stick is in a very bad state currently, but I think I will be able to make it work. Importing, what are you importing? I literally, I did not import, I did not change any files, it's literally the same files. We don't what are you smoking. Assets, this editor window, the field asset window. Oh, I don't want to have this issue. Why are you doing this, Mr. Felix under 30? Thank you for following. Why are you doing this to me? Although it's actually quite quiet today, so that's nice. I'm not sure why it's quiet now, but who cares. We will comment this and we will just... Uh... Can I be kidding me? Uh... Wait, but you say you're not used. What do you mean? That's so cringo. Also, it's just saying like, oh, be, 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 be. Uh, you only said the thing, you do not read it. Okay, okay, okay. This is gonna be very stupid. Hold up. Uh, we need to fix this. I had not expected this outcome. Ask keyword for coding help. Oh, screw you, his coding was terrible. <laughs> I mean, okay, the, the recent things I saw where he coded, they actually are nicely coded, but holy garbage, he's old. The way he called it a cell, that is just a sin to mankind. Mm, can I somehow make Visual Studio shut up? Hold up, where is this garbage? Uh, no, not this one. Where is autosave? Oh, here. Uh, Visual Studio 
Suppress configuration, suppress in source. Okay. Will you this make Unity shut up? It didn't. Well, this is not good. Hmm. I do not want to, to edit. Okay, you know what? Screw it. Uh, can auto save? I'm, you're not using this? Okay, can auto save. I'm just gonna make like this public void as or temp. And all it's gonna do is debug the log, wait for save. So Unity will say, okay, it's a public it's a public function and, and this is being used. It won't care about the function because it's public. Ah, okay. Upload local uh, temp error fix fixed uh, Unity being anno annoying. Okay. This will definitely make sense for all of the contributors to QA sick. Anyways, e uh, uh, uh. Why am I uploading it to my... Okay, screw it. Um, translation like reserve. Okay, so now, hopefully, how I structure this project, if I go to project, schedule objects, package builder, package, and I say generate entire collection, I want to... I want to generate the entire collection. Mm. Oh, wait. Oh, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. Now, if I just export the package. Oh, shut up. Okay, nobody cares. Export package. Local, nah. Project, nah. QASIC, yeah. Script templates, yeah. Export. Actually, hold up. I'm gonna make the. I'm gonna change the version quite quickly. Mm -mm -mm. Edit, editor. Or runtime. Core. QInfo? I think that's it. Uh, show in Explorer. I'm gonna just open it in Notepad. Uh, yeah, Notepad plus plus. Why not? Uh, hold up. Why are you drawing, showing these symbols? They're annoying. Show symbols. No. Uh, Dev one. What's the version currently? I have so many folders open. This is this is what this is what you subscribe for. This is what, why you become a subscriber on this channel. Uh, Unity. Packages, QA sick. What's the current version of two point? Yeah, the version was supposed to be three point zero, and I said no, it's gonna be zero point two three. So okay, Dev two. Okay, okay. Uh, reload. Why? Why should I reload? Shut up. Ah. Ah. Stop throwing. For, stop throwing errors. Nobody cares. Export package. Export package. Local. Don't care. Project. Don't care. QA sick. I care. Scriptable objects. I care. Two point three. Dev two. Exporting package. Alrighty, compressing package. Compressing package. Okay, I have the package. Now I open this, now I open this, now we can close this project. Or actually, we cannot close this project because we need to go to project, script of objects, package builder, package, and then revert the collection. Yes. See, everything is great. Uh, now, if we track this file, it will not make the editor explode. I hope so. Please? Rolling through assemblies? Importing garbage? Please? Please? Okay, this is gonna take away. <laughs> Thanks QASIC, thanks QASIC, I need to fix QASIC. Ah! Maybe why don't you work on Project Armor? But the QASIC ain't working! I need to... I have priorities or something. Busy for 40 seconds, fantastic. Remember when Unity was fast? Rem remember when you could skedaddle? When that action was prohibited in Unity? Is prohi does prohibited mean allowed? Hold up. Oh, has not been prohibited. <laughs> it works. What do you mean? I fixed it! No, I ain't gonna... I ain't gonna... What do you mean? It's literally being used. It's literally being used. This is literally what we made. 
What is temp? Ah, screw it. I'm just gonna do it myself. Void temp. Okay, there we go. We fix error. We fix error. Thanks, basic, for working as always. We don't care about prompt libraries because we're not gonna be using prompts, and this is using the default values. I do not want Xbox controllers, and I only want the keyboard provider. Okay, that makes sense. I need to. I think I need to save this. Okay, I don't. Killbox map editor. Why do, am I in debug mode? Debug mode. Shut up. Uh, I also do not need this right now, but I think everything should be set up correctly. Now we will go to Unity package manager, and there's another package I keep using every single time. Uh, editor toolbox. Yeah, that's the one. Mm -mm -mm. This is gonna be uh, this one. Okay. Now add package from Git. Add. Just gonna install it. Why are you doing this to me? Can't you just work? Man. It's annoying. Code, copy. Could, could you please just work? Unity, please. Oh, suddenly it works. Okay, fantastic. Lovely, yeah. Oh, no, never mind. It doesn't work because why I've got... I hate Unity. Why? Why do you need do you need the do you need the hash? Oh, Come on, you can do it. He did it. Incredible. Okay, now we go to editor toolbox. And we say create. Editor toolbox settings. Uh, yeah. Wrong button. I have shortcuts. R wrong shortcut. No, I said Control Z. No. Man, cooperate. Thank you. Why can't I create a entity? Hello. Hello. Okay. So we're just gonna like, yeah, categorize everything into their own separate spaces. Input, it's gonna be all of the input garbage. Are these? No, they're the same. Uh, and this is gonna be editor toolbox. And then if we go to edit project settings, and you will go to. Don't see it, I don't care. Uh, and we will go to editor toolbox and we will. Click refresh. Okay, now it should all work. We're done. We're by done. We're by done. Okay, we've set. Oh, this is atrocious. Okay, hold up. So, editor toolbox is like this application for application plugin for making the editor a little bit slightly better. And uh, this isn't better. As you can see in the top left corner. Also, oh holy garbage! Why did it not remember my? I have my editor set up in a very specific way. Could you please respect that unity? But now nah, we change it. The version is just gonna revert everything because what's the point? Full HD. Edit project settings, editor toolbox, and then in here we will go to hierarchy and we will uh, remove script, layer, tag, and icon because I only care about the toggle. And yeah. Now we're done. We're by done. Oh, and I don't have my cool script. So now we will make a folder called local. 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 We'll create an assembly definition, which is just like a way of segregating scripts. So basically, we will just tell this assembly to will not exist in all, all situations except for the editor. Where's the editor? Editor. Yes. Apply. And Project Armor, I have this really cool script which I keep using. Uh, this one. Okay, and we will just drag this in. Copy here. 
And now, as you will see on the top window, I have a... <clears throat> Why do I have all of them? Why are there all of the assembly script? What is going on? QA sick, what did you do? Why is it QA sick package? What happened? Why? Ah, uh, what the... No, it's not whatever. What? Okay, so normally QA is separated into the individual packages, or I'm trying to separate it into individual packages, but I want it to be in a whole package in general. So I have an application for moving all of the different packages to one single package. And I did that, and somehow it doesn't work now for no reason. Oh, maybe I. No, okay, I think I missed that. Anyways, apply, who cares? Uh, yeah, we'll have to reopen QA sig once again. Just gonna be a hot minute, as the kids say. You know what? Hold up, can we, can we like, I don't know, have Splatoon soundtrack in the background or something entertaining? Because I, like that, this, this OST that I have, like it's good for, you know, I said it, but... I don't know, I actually never listened to Splatoon. Uh, OST, sorry. Uh, of course, it's all official, officially made by Nintendo. I'm just gonna mute this on your end a little bit. Okay, there we go. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, what do we want now? Curiosity opened. Okay, thank you. Ah, one by one. Or not one by one, I'm not sure. Input options. We will go to core. Runtime. Q info. Trying to fix QASIC. I just wanted... You know what, maybe it was a good idea to just set up everything up before the stream, but who cares. Dev tool. We'll make this tool and we'll go to input. Mm, I give up. Okay, we'll, we'll just navigate right here. Input. This is such chunky. Not devices, not extensions, not key providers, not players. Prompts. Key prompt editor. Oh, hold up, wrong assembly. Uh, input prompts and this is library window. Oh, wait a second. Now it's in the car. Uh, it's this thing. And somewhere here we will have wait for. Oh, yeah, it's here. Okay. So, now, we'll go to Unity Project Packages, and... No, hold that wrong. Project Resources Scriptable Package Builder, we will just press this magical button. <sighs> hold up, I'm sorry. Oh, please don't tell me that you... Hold up! Now there's two QA6, but we'll delete this QA6. Ah, Unity, thanks for existing. I love you, Unity. We all love Unity on this channel. QA6, could you... This is what I get for making everything on my own. Thank you, took you long enough. Project. Shut up. Uh, scripts. Where am I going? Project. Scribble objects. Package builder. Package builder. Generate entire collection. If you have Visual Studio opened for some reason, it breaks a lot of things, but now it doesn't. Export package. Okay, local project, and we only want those to export. And we'll export it as dev tool. Yeah. Mm. 
We'll delete those two and we'll delete those two. And now, finally, I think we will be able to begin work. Holy garbage. And I said I'm, I'm like prepared for this. Like I, I know how to import all of the things quickly. Oh, what a, what a liar I am. Where? Oh, here, okay. QA second, QA sick editor. Apply. Now it's all gonna work. Hopefully. Probably. Maybe. Oh, shut up. Okay, uh... Okay, QA sick ro loaded properly, I think. Edit project settings. Mm, input. Okay, it sort of did. And yes. Input, and you have to create a device structure and a device garbage. QA sick input device structure. Device structure, there we go. And we will create a new. Input map. Add provider, UIM keyboard provider. That's all we need. Available on everything. Except everything for some reason. I do not worry. I think you can see that I've coded that. And uh, now, open git. Why do you not want to work? I think I need to like reload Visual Studio. Oh, suddenly it works? Oh no, never mind. I thought it loaded. Unity, stop lagging! Unity! Come on! Seriously. Ah, not this engine. Ow, ow, ow. Plan management does not exist, I still understand why. You know this thing in assembly- Oh wait a second, yeah I know. It's file stand instead of file management, okay that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Missing type reference in input project settings on game object input. Um, what? I'm sure it will be fine. Okay, now we can begin working. Just open git. Uh, upload. Packages. Imported packages. There we go. Thank you. Now it's gonna resolve packages even, even although we didn't move a single thing, but okay, I, I digress. Now, we can get to coding. So, how do we begin? Of course, the scripts folder. So, how I'm seeing this is first, you make this black because that's just normal things. Uh, we will make a, 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 a. Actually, how will we make it? Oh, I can't pause it now, I forgot. <laughs> Hold up, I can pause it like this. Oh yeah, that's that sucks. Actually, can I have this... Can I... There's like a thing in Firefox where you can make it slightly smaller. Settings. Settings. Where is settings? Settings is here. Mm 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 Enable picture in picture video controls? Is that it? Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, now I have like a, this small window I can control quite easily. I'll put it, I will put you right here. <clears throat> okay. So, I think the preview 
Okay, let's just lay it out how it's supposed to work. Okay, firstly, that, that's where we will go. Canvas, yeah, sure, why not? It was just the UI. Image. Let's go with image. Okay, so here on the... What is this? Okay, I don't know. Uh, here, on the left, we will just have this little fella. He's gonna take, like, something like... Sure. 500 pixels, why not? Uh, 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 we'll make it grey, slightly grey. Or maybe like that. What's the cool, what's the cool thing? Actually, hold up. Do I have like, a, there's like a Google... No, hold up, not that one. Sites Google. Yeah, that one. Let's take a nice looking color because we're gonna be professional. We'll have a black one. And do this shade or this shade. I'm thinking this shade. Okay, time to... Uh, this, yeah. How will it look? Ah, we're pro, gents. We are pro. So, this will be the left panel that will show a list of every single translation. So, uh, how should we call it? I ah, just... That's left. Left panel. In the left panel, we're gonna have a... a, 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 a empty container for a reason for there's I have like an idea in the future but for it to work we'll have to put it in a container okay it's gonna take up the whole thing and then UI scroll view mm, yeah this one this, this is just basically like a area which you can scroll well <laughs> Okay, let's we'll get rid of this, and now we'll uncheck horizontal, because we do not want to scroll horizontally, only vertically. Screw horizontal people, I do not care about you. They did scroll because it's ugly. And spacing is no. And uh, yeah, that is pretty much it. Bottom is zero. Now, this scroll well sliding area handle. I'm not gonna have a UI sprite, because let's just respect ourselves. And you instead go to the fancy website with UI colors. This one. And you'll copy uh, this, sh this shade, maybe. Maybe this shade. Okay. How will this look? Uh, maybe darker? I don't know. I don't know how you do the, the, the... There's like some kind of guidelines for accessibility. I do not care. Okay, and sliding area is gonna be... Uh, Sorry, this one is gonna be this color. Uh, 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 select nothing here, so it will be a nice square. And on the handle, oh no, hold up, not the handle, the scroll view. Not the scroll view. Where? Where's all oh, here? Scroll ball. Uh, no, no navigation because that's just stupid. And handle rect bottom, and instead of having animations and have fade duration, we'll just set it to zero because I am like that. I am professional, not like Northwood. <laughs> Basically, what this will do is that when I press play, I just set the transition time to zero. So now when I oh, it's gonna disappear. I forgot. Object not set to instance of an object. What do you mean? Uh -huh. why is that a thing? Internal QS is gonna locate the default configuration for game console. Because it doesn't exist anymore. Oh don't tell me you cannot load this. Uh QS has gotten a has gotten a little bit of a restructuring. Hold up. Project settings player. Oh no, I don't remember what it was. I will just copy this, create new folder, default, I think. And we'll just paste them in, and I think that will fix the problem? Maybe not. Never mind. What? Hold up. Uh, line 27. Oh, hey, okay. Uh, 
Okay, uh, so... There isn't a configuration somewhere in here. Oh yeah, get config. It didn't work, I guess. Huh. Well, this should work then. Hold up, config instance config. Where is this located? Check instance console. Basic project settings console. Which was Curiosic Project Setting Console. Yeah, it exists. Why doesn't... What? I don't understand. Attached to Unity. Ah, oh, wait a second. It's the new Unity. I have to enable debug mode or something stupid like that. Ah, you did not have to do that. It takes literally forever. Sometimes. Like Project Armor takes like 10 minutes for it to enter debug mode. But hopefully it won't take as long. Please, Unity. Please! Would be nice. Please, Unity. Mm -hmm. I got a lot of waiting. No! Attached to Unity. What is even going on anymore? Visual. What are you smoking? It's literally here. Okay, I don't know. Let's just restart it. Maybe it'll fix itself. Please. Oh, suddenly it will. It does know where this thing is. Attached to Unity again. Suddenly it works. Would you look at that? Thanks, Visual Studio. I love you, Microsoft. I love what you are doing to Minecraft. Check instance. Continue. Settings it all. Yeah, that's how you debug. That's how you debug in this. It's not a bit, it's not a null. So instance will be equal to this. Right? It would make sense. Right? So, why is it equal null? Oh, because the config... Oh, okay, I get it now. Okay, I get it. I get it. So, like, I also need to create. I also need to go to school objects console. Even though I'm not using the console, so like, actually, can I disable the console? Uh, no, I can't. Well, that's upsetting. Thanks, QASIC. I love the QASIC console. Console config. Console config. So we just need to create those files and assign, uh, and assign them config. Yeah, QASIC is going for a little bit of a rough time. Just gonna have to assign this and assign this. Save. There you go. Now it will not scream at us, hopefully. Would you look at that? Isn't that nice? Mm hmm Okay. After wasting that time. As you can see, I set on this scrollable. I set the time to zero. Can I make it... Uh, clamped because I'm boring. Uh, scroll says to 30 because I'm boring. Uh, permanent. Okay. So. So. As you can see, when I press it, it ins it's instant, but if I were to change it to the original 0.1, it 
You see, there's a transition to it, which makes it look really ugly because it looks like a default Unity icon, not an icon, default Unity buttons. Ugh. So I need to set this to nothing once again, because I'm boring. Auto hide, okay, and now we will make a prefab out of the scroll view. So we will just we will just be able to reuse this scroll every single time we want to do anything. Hopefully. Yes. We will. Okay. Uh how do this once again? Vertical layout group? I think so. We just want it to auto expand every single time. Uh aspect. I just want to make it so that every single time we have an item it will just keep expanding itself so it will make room for it. So just te temporarily at a button. A blue and text mesh pro. Oh you're gonna be kidding me. Yeah yeah sure sure. Yeah, we're just gonna expand everything that's with related and we're just gonna uncheck this if I'm correct. Mm, okay, how do you do this again? Fit in parent? No. Height controls width? No. Width controls height? No. Envelope parent? No. None. That literally did nothing. If child scale height. No. Oh, that's aspect ratio for time. Stupid. Content size fitter. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Vertical minimum size or preferred size. I'm not sure. So now it keeps expanding as you can see. So if you were to make all of these buttons the height of 100, because that's really small. And when we will play now, the, the scroll bar, even though I disabled this setting to always be on, it's not going to disappear. Same, we can scroll. Brian, Buen, have Buens. Okay. Progress, progress. It's just UI currently, but yeah, we need to just lay out the basics first. So we will make a prefab out of this button. I'm more like it's gonna be a scroll, scroll view item like button. Makes sense to delete this because we don't need it. Scroll view button. Oh, I do not want to edit it like this. Yeah, now open this prefab. And we will kind of make it. You see how this UI looks right here in this window? Yeah, I'm aiming for something similar to that. So we will say bye bye to default Unity spread because we aren't Norfoot here. And we will use the fancy website from before to get a color like this one. Which will make it look nice, I think. Maybe. Hopefully. Maybe. Or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it's gonna... Oh, I have an idea. I have an idea. Okay, it's gonna be white. Then the highlighted color is gonna be... This one. And the... Pressed color. And selected color. I think. It's gonna be like this. And the normal is gonna be just white. Okay. Uh, once again, no automatic results, stupid, and zero. So, theoretically, and okay, in here, we will use robot, we, I do not have it. Okay, let's import the font. For the sake of sanity, we will just have fonts right here, and I have them stored in my private hard drive. <laughs> fee, 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 fee. Fonts. Okay, now here's a bunch of things I stopped, legally downloaded. And we will go to Roboto. Not that one. Roboto Mono? No, Roboto. Rob Roboto. Theoretically, these are the fonts that Unity normally used since Unity 1. But now we use TextMesh Pro because it's nicer. But these fonts aren't compatible with TextMesh Pro, so we need to convert them to the TextMesh Pro format. Luckily, there's a shortcut for it. If we select all of them and press Ctrl Shift F12, here we go. 
Rowboatowo. Black no, robot to normal. Regular. Why is it so small? Uh, and we will put it in size of... Actually, if this... Oh, I cannot control the size here, that's stupid. Font size is gonna be like... Uh, 40, 30, 30, maybe 40, 40, oh, hold up, yeah, it doesn't update, 30, yeah, it's gonna be 30, and it's gonna be centered and to that side, share, blend, actually, we're just gonna add a, from the left, we're gonna add 10 for padding, and this color, we will change it to pure black, right, yes, I think, Oh no, we will change it to pure white. Because if we press play, as you will see. Never mind, normal color is a lie. Why do you like this? Why do you like this? Hold up. Did I literally just do this? Yeah. Trent, what are you smoking? Okay, actually, I don't like this. <laughs> so, uh, maybe we'll just revert it like this. This will be white once again. And highlighted color will just be... Slightly darker, not this dark. Like slightly darker. Uh, not this dark. Oh, actually, it's, I want it to be lighter. Ah, how do I do this? Okay, hold up. It's gonna be white once again. So I going, keep going back and forth, and then we're just gonna manually set it like slightly lighter a little bit too light can i have an hsv thank you we're just gonna put this to 10. we're just gonna put this to five what, what uh we're just gonna put this to five okay it's getting even worse oh wait a second yeah it's gonna uh 15. okay and then pressed color is way too light we're just press this it's gonna be 20. Yeah, and this is also gonna 20. We're doing this, gents. We're doing this. So if I make this... Oh... Hold up. This needs to be a toggle. That's stupid. Not that toggle. Go away. Toggle. Ah... Gonna make a copy or not? Maybe. Okay, hold up. Unpack this completely. Then in here we will remove this component and add a toggle. Toggle right here. Right here. Just. Oh wait a second. I not save any. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. We're just gonna wing it as always. Fifteen. I think it was pressed color was twenty right here and this is also gonna gonna be 20. sure and this is gonna be zero and this is gonna be none and this is gonna be okay yeah now it has to be a toggle because we will have things that will be selected so if i want if we want to make it selectable it needs to be a toggle so if now go i go here and i say Apply to prefab, and then I go here and say, apply to prefab. So make this like 80, 60, 60 will be enough. And to go here, basic scroll view prefab, and this is gonna be 60. Okay, so let's just duplicate it a bunch. Why are you not a toggle? Oh, please don't tell me you don't change the color. That is so stupid. Why? And you just have like a selected color? Really? Okay, you know what? I will just change it manually when we when toggle it. But yeah. So wait a second. So maybe we should have this. Maybe we should make this a button. Ah. Can I, can I do this? I'm not sure if I can do this, if you want to screen at me. Uh, 
Okay, Unity screamed at me, so maybe that's not that. I have no idea what disconnect is no longer imp implemented. I have no idea what that is supposed to mean, but sure. Why not? Toggle. Oh no, no, button. I'm stupid. Bat button. Okay, so by default it's gonna be this color. Highlighted color is gonna be... Uh, 15... Selected color is gonna be 20. This is also gonna be 20, and this is just gonna be this one. We will have no transition and no navigation, because we like that. Oh boy, thank you, finally, holy garbage. Yay! <laughs> thank you for following, uh, I just scared me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Translation tool. Uh, I think we can code now. Okay. So, what I'm thinking. There's gonna be like a, a bunch of files that will have all of... Uh, why don't I have anywhere SL opened? Hold up. Uh, manage browser local files. Yeah, we'll have just... A bunch of files that will have every single line in every single one of those defined and will say what they do. I don't even know you stream on Twitch. Yes, I did. Yes, I do. <laughs> Actually, maybe I should promote that in a video. I mean, like, the, 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 in the video, the, there's, there's, a, there's a segment where there's a Twitch chat, so... I don't know, sister egg. <laughs> so, if we want to have files with all of these fields defined, we will need to. We will need to make a script with the object, which is like a file, but with code, which is cool. Where is the scripts folder? Scripts folder is right here. Let's close this one and let's close this one because we do not care. Uh, scripts. Translation file like. Define translation defines it was like okay yeah we just gonna ignore folders and then we get we'll, we'll, uh, when we will have a bunch of scripts then when we will worry translation defines okay reload thank you a scriptable object, uh, create asset menu or item, context menu item, I think. I feel that calls a named method. No, uh, create asset menu, I think. Yeah, 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 okay. So file name will be equal new, new translation defined. So when we create the file, that's how it will be called, and then menu name. This is where this is the path where we will be able to create the file. So I normally just put them under scriptable objects, all of them, no matter the project, and then we will just put them in SL translation magismo defines like translation defines. Okay, yeah, sure. So here we will have the path. Which is kind of like the... Uh, or like a file name, I guess. Had a message for a reason, race, ethnicity or religion. I'll post in chat. Uh, thank you for spamming racial slurs, that's fantastic. I have no idea what they mean. I think that's Russian. Path. Path is path. Yeah, it's just... Oh, hold up, we do not need a path, just file name. It's gonna be the name in the file that... Okay. Can we just like... How do I ban you? <laughs> uh, block? Or... Because I wanted to bl block it on the chat. How do I do that? Deny. How do I ban people? I don't know. Let's uh, block... Block... Prevent them from hosting... You whisper prevent them from hosting you. Yeah, it doesn't. I honestly have no idea how to do that. Maybe I can. 
Is your flag managed, suspicious user? <laughs> ah, okay, you're just gonna shut up. File name. And we will just have a list because I feel fancy today. With string. It's gonna have all of the defines, which will just be names for all of the different lines in here. Actually, because, you know, now I'm gonna be thinking about it. Because there's like. There are like, uh, for example, this nuke, which is just from the top. It just have you, we cannot have defines for this. This is like a multi-line line, I guess. Now it's really okay. This is quite difficult. This, this is where things get a little bit difficult. Dare I say it? Because, for example, if we go to items, like we should divide these lines as different entries. So how do we do that? <laughs> how do we make like, this generic way of doing this and not breaking everything? So why why is this? Why, I have no idea. Why, why is there separation now here? I honestly don't understand. Does this matter? Okay, whatever. Like invent... No, hold up. Uh, interface settings. Like, for example, how do we define where uh, uh, we will just have, like, a field for adding this? How do we define it in that line that it has a field for adding? Actually, that's quite easy to do. But... The rest. How do we manage the rest? Hmm. Oh, there's another game hints. Oh, yeah, there's another, like, from the... Top to bottom. Oh, no, hold up. No, that's not it. But they try this sign. It's like a different type of file. Like a completely different type of file. Huh. So I guess we'll just have to make a class. Okay, I think I know how to do this. So for these files that are from top to bottom, we'll have separate files for them, but for normal files, we'll, it's just from... You know, every line has, like, its ID, I guess. Public string... Uh, no, sorry, public class. Or struct, maybe. Or class, or struct. I don't know. Uh, struct, and we will call it... Define. So it's not serializable, so we will be able to serialize it, and this is what will, will be here. So in here we will just have a public string. Hmm. It's really complicated because we need to make these fields not editable, like in the inventory, like items. We need to make those fields un like not ed non-editable. That makes sense. I think like we can do like separation because hold up oh yeah for example in here you see that it's separated here and then it's separated once again here so it's the id number which you cannot edit then there's the name which is a separate field and then this is the name which is also a separate field so how do we define that how do we how do we write this here that's what i'm asking Yeah, this is, a little bit, this is a little bit difficult. Also, like, I wanted translation to... Because I think, like, if I were to just... Add a field here, like, it would... SO would still load it normally. I think. So I want to figure out, how do I make this application to... Don't freak out. Huh. This is... Difficult. <laughs> My small Polish brain cannot comprehend this. Huh. So maybe like a separate field for like saying instead of using uh, the lines, the ID of the line, like line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4, instead use this ID. Maybe that could work.
This is quite difficult. Oh, another another part, like you see, it's iron sights. So here, for example, you do not have IDs, you just have the names, which you can translate. Meaning that, uh, yeah, yeah, for some reason, this file uses IDs right here, and that's how it reads it, and here they just use the ID of the line. How do we, how do we make, like, a generic system for this? Because sometimes they separate these fields with uh, this, uh, with this symbol. And sometimes they don't. Okay, so maybe we'll just have like a separation character. Or maybe it's not gonna be a string, it's gonna be a char. If we can show that in the editor, I think we can. Uh, I guess the proper way of doing this is like this. Okay, let's see how it will look like. Let's create translation defines and when we will create a translation define right here like let's just say items oh I can oh that's stupid I can okay yeah that 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 that, that works wow thanks Unity you're nice so yeah for example for the, fi for the files file. Uh, sorry, items file. Where is it? Yeah, items.txt. So I selected the items.txt. That's where the, that's the file. And it's going to be using this for separating. And then... And then... Huh. Or actually, like, it's gonna be, like, a different ID. Okay, so, what I'm thinking. Let's say, that's a new update, and suddenly items, instead of using, or hold up, attachments, instead of using, well, lines, they say, like, iron.site, something like this. And we do not want to use a number, so it's gonna be a string. So, normally, this is just gonna be like 0, 1, 2, and it's just gonna be line ID. But you'll be able to say, hey, don't use the line ID, use the, I don't know, first thing separated, the first character separated, or for example, like that. Actually, yeah, we can do that. Uh, enum, so you'll create an enum, which is basically just like a finger, you can only select one. Or sometimes you can select multiple, but yeah, it's just like a type, that makes sense. And we were just uh, saying uh, identification type. So first identification method will be just line ID. And the second one will be first separation. It all makes sense. So normally, if... Okay, let's see. Unity, are you smart? No, you're not. Can I just write enter here? No, I can't. Well, thank you, Unity. You're just brilliant as always. Ha ha ha. It's annoying. So we're just adding public bool, or actually QA sick. Help me out. Oh, that's not implemented yet. That's stupid. Okay, just add a, we'll just have a separate bool. So we'll just ask, like, should we just do the line ID or should we look at something different? Or, uh, hold up, actually, we'll just use this identification type. So if we will... Yeah, so if we will want to, like, uh, let's say, read this file right here, attachment names, we'll say, hey, identify it by the line ID. And then it will do that. This is zero and it's gonna... That, that's how it reads it. It looks like this is zero, so this is the translations for the non-attachment. 
yeah, default options with no effects. And then you can use the separation character to separate these fields into two different ones. So for example, the first define is going to be for the first line, which is going to be this. It's going to have ID 0. Yeah, it's going to have ID 0. And then it's going to have a, 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 a... Yeah, and then it's going to have, like, for example, attachment underscore none for the first ID in the application. That's just the name of the application. That's the ID that we will use in the application to refer to that field. It's going to be... So it's going to have attachment underscore none. And then the second thing, which is this thing, is going to be un attachments underscore none uh, underscore description. So that's how the application is going to recognize it. That's how it's going to load it. All right, am I going crazy? Does that make sense? <laughs> so, defines one, defines zero. Okay, hold up. Unity, this is not acceptable. Editor toolbox, force default list. It's gonna, you know, take him some time to actually re recompile and then it's gonna work pro probably quite well. Change this to first item. So, if I understand this correctly, if I explained it correctly to you, we will now set first item. So, in the separation character will be a tilde. Yeah, it's a tilde. So now, when it will read the items file, it will not look for the line ID because, for example, let's say if we did that, if we did this, then it's instead of just saying that hey, this is this is the janitor keycard. No, it's gonna say this is ID one. So this is the translation for the scientist keycard. Okay, that's how we're gonna read it. But just for this file, because honestly, the, the, this keeps changing. The, the, there isn't like a formula for this. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. The line ID here is gonna be zero for the ID. And then attachment element zero is gonna be... Hold up. Uh... Keycard janitor. And the second field, which is non-existent because they don't exist, although you can add them, it's gonna add description. And that's and we'll just have to copy this 48 times and fill out every single other keycard, which I'm not gonna do right now. We could probably do that in like later when we will be finishing this application. That's when we're gonna sit and define every single one of these. Maybe I'll actually make an editor for this. Because this is gonna take quite a long time. So yeah, that's an editor that would, you would just select like, hey, just automatic line ID and it will just keep filling this out as it normally should. Yeah, that's the idea. Actually, instead of having the line ID, we should just probably do like file ID. That makes sense. So if this is instead if it, this isn't first item and it's just say it says like line ID, and then it's just completely gonna ignore this. It's gonna ignore file ID and it will just go. This is the first element, so we're gonna read it for the first line and we'll just keep going like that. That's me idea, basically. So yeah, now let's make a file. Oh, actually, yeah, I want to make this application that if there's an update to the version, you can still export your translation to an older version or import the older translation and export it to a new version. So we will have to make sure. So every single, every time a version will like release of a cell, we'll just copy all of these and then we will just save them in the background. So if you want to translate, then we use the old versions. And if you want to translate to the new version, then we use the new, new version. If that makes sense. I keep repeating myself, but yeah. Now we have translation version. And that fa Oh, no. Translation version is just gonna contain every single translation 
define. Oh, hold up. I need to name spaces because I am nice. SLTM, like project, because the name can change and I'm not gonna bother renaming project. That's translation. Okay. Project dot translation once again. I'm just gonna categorize them properly so it will be nice. And once again, create asset menu file name. It's gonna be called new project version. And here it's gonna be called. Uh, oh yeah, uh, and the path for it will be scriptable objects. Slash, I think it's objects. Yeah, it's objects slash translation slash version. And that this thing will literally just hold a bunch of all of these translation define translation defines. Yeah, and that's it. That, that's all the oh, and also I guess we'll have a version public string v version. It's gonna call it a string for the version. <laughs> So, scriptable object translation version. Transver 13.1. Can I name it like that? It didn't scream at me, so I'm taking that as a yes. Actually, what's the current version of it? So, I'm too lazy to check. So, it's gonna be 13.1.0. And the fines is just gonna. Oh, whoopsie, whoopsie. We're just gonna select items and we'll select every other item once we add it. So now, this scroll view, we will make a script that will actually do things. I know. Mm -mm -mm. I disable this because that's stupid. Actually, no, we have prefabs, I forgot. So, scripts. We will now create, we'll, hold on, translation. We will move these to their own separate script. Like translation data. Translation, and then you will have data, the data folder, but I'm placed to that now, and uh, I'm placed to, you know what, I'll just separate them into in their individual folders later. It's really difficult to do that. <laughs> so now we will just have like a translation, D defines list, does not make sense. So we're gonna code the logic for this panel right here on the left. Like translation, the oh, hold up, it's new visual. I need to do this here. Translation defines display. Yeah. Namespace project dot translation dot UI. Okay, sure. No, no behavior, yeah. Okay, so now we will have a public... Uh, sh um, what was it called? Actually, no. We need to add, have a new folder called, called just UI. And you have... Scroll view... Scroll view button script. And this script project. Yeah, and this script will just be responsible for holding the information to where the text is because hold up, mono behavior oh unity. Unity engine. Where's Splatoon soundtrack? Why is that not playing anymore? Mono behavior. Also using text mesh pro because we love text mesh pro. Uh, public temp pro uh, text mesh pro UGY text and that's probably all it's gonna do make sex translator that's what I'm working on you'll be able to do that what do you want from me oh, uh, using project uh, using project UI Scroll view item, uh, scroll view button, 
button uh, scroll item prefab and you can mark it as a prefab using QA sick prefab yay <laughs> so this is just gonna populate this entire list with that single item operation subdate cannot be executed you know you're supposed to work that's why I downloaded you. That's why I downloaded this version. Here we are just at the translation. Defines display. Oh, actually, no, it's gonna be in the contain. Tra translation defines display. And here we will go to this prefab. Scroll, uh, scroll view button. Scroll view button and just attach this text. And that's pretty much all we need for now. I guess we're saying the reference to the button, but I, uh, you know what, whatever. Public. Uh, translation version versions versions. Uh, for now, it's just gonna be one version. I won't bother. So, awake or not awake, just make a void, reload, populate, control, uh, populate, what's it called, list, yeah, we'll just call it on awake for now. And what's this gonna do, it's, it's gonna look for the version. Oh boy, this is gonna be no difficult. This is gonna be a little bit difficult now. Var item in version. Actually, hold up. Var items version. We will use system. We will use. Well, yeah, we will use system to link queue to make this easier for me. So we will now select every single line. I guess every single define. Uh, dot defines. Yeah, so this is just a list of all of the different files, and then we will select from all of these files, we will select the defines in them, which are all the lines. Which from them we will select one second. Hold up. We will select the fields. And yeah, that's it. That's, that is pretty much it. That's all the code. So now this just shows a list of every single like define field. In the whole project. Now, if we, uh, why should I do an if? Instantiate, which is a horrible method to use, but for now we will not do object pulling, shut up. And we will use scroll item prefab. Yeah, and we will parent it inside of the Public, or actually it's gonna be public, I'm not like that. Transform and... Uh, item parent. And we make the item parent its parent. Yay. Var. Uh, scroll item. Now in the scroll item, We'll go to text and then we will change the text to well, the item. What's, what is this? String. What did I select? Oh, hold up. Select multiple. Select many. And here we also do select many. Oh, did I mess up once again? I'll just select. Okay, yeah, now it works. So now, we will assign everything to their properly, proper, propers. It's gonna work, probably. So here we have our script. This 
the this is the scroll button. This is where we will spawn them. A little bit of a Minecraft re reference, and this is the trans trans. <laughs> So now if we run the game, it will show us a very nice looking error. It didn't. Incredible. Incredible it worked, although it shows the numbers and not the names. Hold up. Uh, oh, why is it field ID? I'm stupid. Fields IDs. Okay, now it makes sense. Oh, that's, that, that's interesting. <laughs> Okay, context. When I make videos, I have this little notepad. Like, when, when I review videos, I have this little notepad and I just, uh, like, note, like, at, at this moment, make this, make this, yeah, change this, so that... I am not suicidal, okay? Do not say I am. <coughs> it shows up, gents. This is such powerful character development. Wow. Wow. So. Now we will need a dictionary. As we like those. Public dictionary. String. Scroll view button. Buttons. Buttons. And we will make this a get and a set. And we will do the uh, new diction. Oh, uh, yes. So, when we create our buttons, we'll just save them to this dictionary. Add string. Scroll item. We'll need to make sure that we don't have, have the same like IDs, but well, it's not gonna be supported anyway, so who cares. Scroll item. Now hold up, item, and here we'll do scroll item. So, and now for every item, hold up, scroll item. We're also going to reference a button for which we will need the namespace unity engine.ui. And here we reference a button. And we will use this that when we spawn this button, when we click, Oh, hold up, this is Unity's messed up version. When we click the button, we will select it. And selecting means making it selected. Public bool selected. So when a, when a button is selected, we use a different color style. Yeah. Actually, we will need to define this. See, because currently, if we look at this button, you can see it has a very specific amount of... You can see these fields. They're very specific. So if the button gets selected, we have to change the, these colors a little bit to show that it's selected. And we do that by... I don't know. We will figure it out. I will, this is what I will do, I will make a screenshot of this. Then I will, yeah, make this stay on top. And here, just add a public class. Sure, or struct. It will be a struct because I'm like that. Or a class, or a struct, I don't know, it's gonna be a struct, who cares. It's gonna be a class. I never know which one to use, okay? Brian. Button like interactable color theme. Should be it's probably a separate class, which you know what I'm gonna make it a separate class. Ah, uh, add item. Come on. What? Okay, so we'll, we'll just copy this, we'll delete this, we'll just paste it here. Project.ui UI, yay! Interactable color theme, interactable color theme, and here we'll just have all of the different colors that it normally... Oh, why do I have inserted? 
on using unity engine because colors are inside this namespace color normal and we're just, we now we just need to go for each of them oh why is it so big normal color like just normal like of course it's a color public color highlighted public color selected fabric color disabled why is this big stop that second pre oh hold up highlighted i missed one let me just make this bigger come on whoopsie uh pressed there we go and that's all of the colors right yes it, they are so the button now is gonna contain two of these oh hold up i need to add that it's i need to make this system not serializable because else it won't show up in the inspector because it's not serializable we cannot save it so public inspector uh, theme normal and public selected what uh normal theme selected theme uh, fine all of the other scripts what happened translation display public void toggle yeah yeah <laughs> so when we toggle it so this is just, this is gonna be called every single time we press we click a button or should it be called here you know what screw it it's gonna be called here and we will have a public action oh event system action bool on selected okay so every single time we press a button this method will be called which then will toggle this toggle that makes sense will fire it will fire this thing and it will change the color thing so let's do that selected will be equal not selected yeah then on uh, on selected invoke selected so yeah we'll just call this function hey we changed and then everybody is gonna respond like oh okay let's do my logic and now we have like a private field here apply color theme and we will just say hey apply this color theme and depending if we're select selected or not we'll use the selected theme or the normal theme and okay and now that it's time to apply all of this if button is equal null then well we cannot really apply it because it's equal null but if it's not then button selected co uh, color co color i guess i did this for no reason i guess i can just do color block i can just do button with colors will be equal this I do not need this and I don't need even that class if I understand correctly would this work like this? <sighs> it does that is incredible all these values are stupid maybe if I, maybe if I change them like this reset hold up i know Th there's a method that gets called okay i why does the music keep pausing video post continue watching what do you mean why is it pause uh, uh, uh. 
Yeah, there's, there's a method that gets called every single time you add a script, which is called reset. So when it gets added, firstly, we will just make the button. We'll just try, you know, assigning everything automatically. And also text, get component, te text, mesh, pro UGY. So auto it, we'll just try detecting this automatically. And if we detected a button, then normal theme will be equal selected theme will be that will be equal oh i hate this i am not doing this uh button dot colors button dot colors once again so now i just did my job what can i say if i press set, reset out oh, here we go except that the text did not get oh hold up uh here, get component in children. Yeah. Reset. Yay. Okay, so now when something gets selected, we'll use a nice shade of green because this is sponsored by Doc Frankenstein Industries. Highlighted color. Sure, or maybe a little bit more. Or maybe a little bit less. Sure. Then we'll go here, make this slightly lighter once again. Disabled colors, just. Oh, hold up. Copy, paste. Yeah, sure. Header. Or is it label? I forgot. The really advanced one. I think it's label. Yeah, okay. Uh, themes. Space. Or like... Uh, Group, begin group, I think. And end group once again. And this group will be called normal. And we'll do something similar right here. Begin group. Uh, selected. End group. So, this a little bit of tomfoolery has managed to make... The UI here look like this, see? Oh boy, I messed up. I think if I will do this like this, it's gonna work. Maybe not. Yeah, it's not gonna work. Well then that's that's a shame. But we do not need the space anyways. <laughs> We're too good. Yay! Unselected. X. Ah. Uh. Okay. So when it, it's selected and X. It would be nice if it was actually... No, hold up. Yeah, if it's selected. If... If it's selected, if it's selected, I keep saying the same thing. Actually, maybe we should make this a function. A public void cell change state. Okay, so this method will be used to just saying, hey, you're on, you're off. But this one is just going to be used that, okay, if you're off, then turn yourself on. If you're on, then turn yourself off. So, yeah, that's the difference. So when, for example, 
here when it's selected but if it's trying to unselect itself we'll just say man no you can't select select set se scroll item that select what's it called change state I will just change it back to true if x if the state will be equal to false then we'll just change it to true and if it's not equal to true then to, then 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 public string current selected item get set or actually not set private set because we only want to set it in this script so if something is selected then this oh what do you want okay okay so then we'll just say hey dictionary if this thing is not equal null meaning that there's something selected and this dictionary of buttons actually contains this item well then buttons of this item change state to false just unselect that item okay this should work and also now we also need to say that hey this selected item wait okay, hold up here and now we just need to say here The new selected item is this item, which is just called item. And now we're gonna get an error. That's fantastic. Lovely. What? Oh, I need to save. Oh, and I need to write this also. Yay. So now, should not be... Gents! Gents, we have got it. We have got it, the, the infamous error. Should not be capturing there's a hot control. Welcome to the stream, thank you. Gents, no one is watching me. This is truly so sad. I really want to watch yourself. <laughs> it's just the beginnings, okay? Doesn't work. Oh, I did not assign it, didn't I? Scroll the button. Button. If you do this, then... Scroll the button. Uh, toggle state. Toggle state. Okay, now it's gonna work. Now it's gonna work 100%. I'm sure of it. And now, let's say we want... Oh, yes, and we can't... Uh, stack over for the request operation because it's stack over... What is this? Oh no, don't, don't say that we cannot change the colors on the fly. That's gonna be really annoying. How do we change the colors on the fly? Seriously, hold up. Let's thanks for Google. Unity, change button color runtime. Yes, exactly. Or shut up. Yeah, but that's literally what I did. I was to change the into. Oh, this is gonna be annoying. Yeah, this is gonna be annoying. Okay. Set. Color. Change button color. Color block color. Yeah. If there is no button, then we don't care. And then blend button dot colors dot normal color will be equal color not color with small normal color
Hold up, does Unity lie to me? Hold up, hold up. Unity change button color. That's literally what it said. That's literally the, the, that was the official answer from a UI rep the Unity representative. Yeah, that's what he says. Chant. Chant. Oh no, hold on. Oh, this is more, even more annoying. Why are you like this? Well. This is so annoying. Thanks, Unity. You are making our life miserable as always. Okay, now we go inside the color block. Uh, uh, uh. Sure. Now we'll do a little bit amount of tomfoolery. Now delete all of these. I select all of these. Okay, and now we just need to manually change, make them not capital. Am I, am I doing this? Yeah, yeah, okay. By duration, and now when we have all of these. And copy them and say button colors dot this we could color dot this okay and now instead of just doing this very simple way here we're just gonna make it twice as complicated because unity loves us mm-mm Come on! Mr. Unity, you suck. I wasted so much time with you and you still did not help me. You know... Hold up. Button changing color stack overflow. Uh, hold up, Unity. Well, is there actually no way of doing this? This is this sucks. Holy cow, this actually sucks. Really? There is no way of actually officially doing this. Please allow- oh, shut up. Oh, shut up. What is this garbage? Why am I- Why did I end up in Russia? What is even going on? Why can't I check, click color to green when I press blue on? The solution is pretty simple. Oh, it's using GUI style. That is not what we want. That is literally not what we want. Aha, <laughs> aha. This is stupid. I do not want the image, I want the button. I want to change the color, changing color block. Color, uh. Uh, 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 uh. UI button color doesn't work. There is called on click the first dog lines, the second.
No, it's once again an image. I do not want to change the image. Stop with the image. Hey, you're just stupid. You figured it out, okay. How did you figure it out? Temp button. What? But that's literally what I did and it did nothing. Unless... If I just did this. Maybe that will work, maybe that will fix it. I just want to change the colors, I do not care about the color multiplayer and other garbage. Nope. It still keeps causing stack overflows for literally no reason. Can I just change the normal color? Gents. I am getting desperate. Unity, why can't I change the color? I just want to select as a scientist keycard. Uh. Unity, we love you. But holy garbage, you are annoying. I don't understand. Yeah, it, like, this is impossible. Why is there not a single answer on the internet that will just tell me, hey, just do this? No. Nothing like that. Stupid. Oh, oh that is a button, okay. Can I make... I want to code. Why are you preventing me? Color block de the color. Mm. I'm just gonna make my own button. Add a big pool. I cannot add anything because the unity keeps saying beep, 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 beep. the requested operation cost a stack overflow because I cannot change the color files causing a stack overflow means there's some of the internal garbage. Unless <sighs> Oh never mind Unity. I'm sorry Unity. I'm sorry Unity. I'm sorry John Unity. John Ricatello, I'm really sorry. Uh but button but colors. This was good, but what wasn't good. Okay, so change state silence is just basically that just changing the state but it's not gonna alert anyone about it. And because we need to use this because okay, here. Every time you just like say change state or unchange state or whatever. And uh no. <laughs> we can't do that. We need to do this silently here and we need to do this silently here. And now it's gonna work. No stack overflow. That's a, that website sucks. <gasps> Gents, it works. It works. It works as always because I am amazing. Holy garbage. Okay. Okay. Now, into somehow like save all of the information. Because we're currently just listing all of the predefined symbols, but we need to save. Like, hey, this line was the translation. We need to save that somehow. That would be smart, right? Image, right? Panel. Gonna be have the width of six hundred because I feel like it. It's gonna have the same color as this boy. Come on. Okay, so this will be like this inspector window on the left. Container. Container, and here we will add once again the uh, uh, scroll view. Yeah, seems all right. And in this scroll view right here, we will now temporarily only have... Uh, Text. Oh no, hold up. Not the text. We will have an input field. 
It's different from text by... It's different from text. Input field, yeah. Okay. Height of it will be... 100. If not larger, 300. It's gonna... Uh, sorry, a little bit too much. 200. Yeah, 200 seems fine. Yeah, about that. It's gonna... Actually, content. It's just gonna have padding from both of the sides. If I can do that. I hope I can. Uh, left, right. Actually, let's do this. Let's make this 20. Because why not? We like this. Can I do that? Uh, hopefully I can. Uh, no background because we aren't Norfolk. We hate Norfolk on this channel. Uh, once again, zero, no. Oh, there's a lot of settings here. It's gonna be a multi-line. Submit, multi-line, new line. Standard, yeah. Uh, line limit, we do not have to. Yeah, we do not have one. Placeholder, placeholder. Oh, wait a second, can it scroll? I guess it can't. Because we don't have a scroll ball. No matter. It's just, it's just temporary, okay? It's just temporary. To make this look professional, as always, we will use this funny website from before. This is gonna be the background. And the text is gonna be black. Yeah. Black like me soul. Roboto. Normal Roboto font. Come on. A regular. Thank you. And we're just gonna change it to like 25. Yeah. Okay, so the text is just gonna be black. Yeah. And I think we'll go for a little bit of a darker background. And be a lighter one? No, I think it's gonna be darker. Yeah, this one, this color seems good enough. So here, instead of having it black, we'll just have it white. Instead of white. Now what maybe just slightly a little bit darker again. You know what we'll just figure out later. It's just gonna be a placeholder for now. So if I'm correct. Hello. Yay! We have like so this is gonna be the inspector window. And say so I have keycard janitor like this, so I can say janitor. In janitor description, useless. For example. Now, this is starting to look really nice. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to realize this is a little bit too big, both of them. Maybe let's make this 500. Let's make the left panel only 400. Yeah. And maybe the button. Hold up, the button is gonna have a little bit of a smaller font. 25. Uh -huh. Oh, and I need to do this again. I need me glasses. Okay, time to write code. Sadly. Okay, uh, this panel right here, this container. Like this will tell us like the currently selected item. I guess we will also just write here that 
Also write an action so every single time the section changes it will notify us. Using system action string select on selection change. The selection is change as they say. Invoke item. Okay. So every single time an item gets selected, this will be called. Also, I guess I can delete this. Where's my water bottle? Mm -hmm. You need to have like a database containing like every single define and what it what it says. So it's information. So I guess let's let's get to it. I guess <laughs> script. Translation. Allow me to move this. And data, in this folder we'll just have all of the data. The current data, so... This is gonna be called... Okay, um... App file, yeah, makes sense. Project translation data. I guess since we're here already, like we can just define, move this to its proper namespace. Also move this onto its proper namespace. Yeah, beat this because it's unnecessary and also beat this because it's un uh, unnecessary. So now app file, it will have its not mono behavior. The serializable file. Serial serialize what using system. Public class What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Public class and I guess that's just line or line no, I'm, I'm saying like, for example, Janet Rocky card, that's like an entry, I guess, entry data. Let's call them entries. Yeah. Public string entry ID ID. Public string entry 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 this entry. Hmm. <laughs> Entry ID and just uh, that data content content yeah content so this is like this is just like for example let's say this is janitor keycard this will just say janitor so this is this is what the this is what the entry is supposed to like mean 
Oh, why did I treat both of them? <laughs> oopsie, 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 oopsie. Serialize field entry data. Which will be a list. Entries. And then here it will be a public dictionary, maybe? Yeah, we'll make this a dictionary. String. Entry data. Because we cannot serialize a dictionary, and dictionary is quite fast because we just say, hey, name, and it already gives us the thing. But here we need to say a number, which is, you know, not really that helpful, so you need to like look for everything and say, oh, you're named like this, and then they will say yes. So, we'll need to convert this to a dictionary, but how will we do that? Well, there's a thing called I Syria. I don't understand, I don't remember what it was called. I serialization cover receiver, maybe? Oh, for the love of. What is going on? I serial agent callback receiver. Alt enter. Holy garbage. On before serialize. Okay, so before it gets serialized, then we'll just convert every single entry to entries. So we'll convert the dictionary to a file that we can actually save. So, entries dot... We need to link you. <laughs> we could just let us select things quite easily. Entries dot se uh, select... And we'll just select the value, which will be the entry data, which that's what we need. And then just convert it to a list. Yeah, and after we deserialize, so when we load the file, we will just need to convert this one to this one. We need to convert this thing that we can save to a thing that we cannot save, but it's a lot more easier to work with. So, entry... En mm -hmm. Entries... Actually, hold up. We actually... Before we do that, we need to check if there are like, any duplicates. Eh, you know what, for now we won't. We will not. We'll just trust the user and they will never... Probably, definitely never break anything. Entry ID, yeah. So pretty much we will select. Oh, what am I going to move this to the bottom of the script to make it nice? So, uh, yeah, we'll just select, uh, we'll just convert this to the dictionary and we need to select the string because, well, this is just numbers. So we need to select what's the key. And the key is this thing. However, if there's a duplicate, whoopsie do. Let's hope there isn't. <laughs> and I'll probably just look for and see if there's like a issue but we will implement that later see this is how it fix problems in programming hello 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 we're making a translation tool but currently it's data so it's boring to do make sure there aren't any duplicates yeah and like if there's a duplicate then suddenly we'll, then we will have to like alert the everything and say like hey user you have multiple entries what do i do <laughs> Like, can't load file because something, something. It was the app file. This is what will be saved. So, now we need some kind of, like, transition manager. And since that, that's really, that's really wazy way of doing that, but oh well. Hello, Doc and Chad. I just woke up. 1 p.m. How dare you? Mm, translation. Controller. Like translation controller, I don't know how to say it. Okay, so this is just gonna be a script that's gonna load the files, manage the file. Okay, it's manager. We're, we're gonna call it the manager. It's really difficult naming all of these things. Someone just uploaded a video on Vimeo and I got an 
notification. I'm so happy. What will this tool do? Well. He doesn't have any errors. Thank you. So. On the, 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 here, on, in the middle, you'll just see a preview of what you're doing. So, for example, and yeah, this is just gonna contain every single uh, d define. Now, this is contain every single file. So, instead of working with translation like this, because what is this garbage? Instead, you will just have an application, you'll see every single, like, entry. For example, kick out the janitor, which will be right here. It's gonna load that. And it's gonna say, uh, yeah, and then you will be able to see how it looks in game because there will be like a screenshot and it's gonna like preview what's going on. And you will be able to say like, hey, janitor, except that now when you write something here, it like it doesn't matter. So we need to link this this up. That's what I'm trying to do. So currently I'm making a file that holds all of the data that you will be able to save as a proprietary file that uh, you will not. Eh, eh, eh. Nice, yeah, it's gonna, like, you will be able to just export it to all of this. Or, you can just save it in this proprietary file, which you can then once again load, and then change all of the values and have all of your data there. So yeah, that's the idea. Translation manager. Should we make it static or not? Ah, uh, you know what, John Unity will be proud. <laughs> Okay, uh, using qasic.files. So I'm theoretically, if I say serialization type, <laughs> now if I say public serial. Oh, hold up, actually, no. Files.pro. Serialization, yeah. Files.serialization makes sense. Uh, serialization provider. <gasps> I think that may work. Maybe not. Serialization. What is this? I don't think that's it. Yeah, that's not it. Mm -mm, that is not it. Okay, I forgot. What's it called? QASIC. QASIC. Hello, hello. Runtime. Core. Files. Object serializer. Okay. Object serializer. Serializer, serializer. Okay. So on awake currently, we're just gonna load this file from the desktop. And if it's not there, we're just gonna save it. Hold up. Serializer dot file path. Oh, we will need to do math. To string. Oh, wait a second. No, we cannot use this. Oh, we cannot use this. Oh, oh, oh. this is so cringo. Okay, so on awake. There will be a file here. App file. Oh. Project.translation. Data. App file, which will be the file housing all of the different translations. And by default, we're just gonna. We're just gonna use our own. This, this is just a class, like, the, the, yeah, we don't need to f fret by doing this sin. Ah, is it a sin to unity? Oh, please don't tell me. Can I, can you just... Okay, thank you. File, 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 file. Yeah, and on awake... Hold up, no, we cannot do this like this. Uh, on awake, we'll just make a new file. How do we do this again? We do like a method like appfile.create. I think we'll do something like this. Static app file create. So we'll just make Yeah, but here before we do anything, file.entries the add and we will need to oh we will need to somehow get the most recent version. Yeah, uh 
So we're just going to reference it here using app using app project dot translation dot defines. Add it as a VC controller. Maybe I'm not sure how I will update it, but yeah, maybe. But today we are working on this. Maybe the next stream will actually update that application because it's more exciting. App file. Uh, no. What's it called again? Translation version. Tra translation. Var. The. Uh, the. 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 Defines. Translation. The defines. Dot select. Many. Actually, how do we do this? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, it's fine. Oh, yeah, this is a little bit complicated now. Yeah, because we remember when we wrote all of. Uh, oh, where did you go? Remember when we wrote all of this? Like the, the, all of the, this little, the, all of these little, little uh, different little like things. Oh boy, because like you know, uh, tr you know, SS translation isn't that great. Because for example, in here, like every line is just ID zero. The, the first line shows very low. The first line will, uh, the second line will show low. The third line will show medium, and th that's how SL loads it. But for example, in items, SL loads it by looking at this number. So we wrote a bunch of logic to kind of... I, I mean, we didn't wrote the logic, but we planned out the logic. Now we need to implement that logic if we actually want to live. So this is going to be horrible. So, firstly, we will need to like... Hmm. I mean, what we're looking for is define and then the name. Ah okay, yes, so Unity Coding, I haven't done that in a lot, in, in, in a hot while. Well, we are about to get hot because it's hot outside and I was... I spent like an entire hour today trying to find a fan so that I wouldn't die. Impossible to find that. I don't know. I do not know. Yeah, because what we're essentially looking for... Oh boy, sp skip the screen, go. What is this Splatoon 3D con concert? Go away. When it's 24 Celsius outside, I do not. I am too scared to check. Yeah, essentially, what we want is just a list of all of the different entries and their names. Wait. Oh wait, we don't care. Oh yeah, we don't care. I guess. I mean, later I would like to like. They should, these things should probably have default values, but you know what, screw it, for now it's just... File... Create... Okay, here, create... Defines... Dot select... X dot... File IDs or file IT, whatever... Is there file ID and file IDs? That is stupid. Okay, you know what? Yeah, we'll just we'll just skip it like that. That is stupid. No, it's not. It's, oh, it's field IDs and file ID. I'm blind. Okay, sorry. Select many defines here. So now for for each var item in defines, we'll just need to file a ah, dot entries we will just need to add the entry and a new entry data which will contain this and yeah ju just the name Okay, so I'm just writing a bunch of code to make my life easier so that we can just say, hey, create the new entry and we just start tell it the name and it will do that. But also, if we want to tell it a name and also a uh, entry ID, what's it called? Content. We can also do that. Hold up. Yeah, 
Yeah, also we need to mark this as serialized, bro. Serializable. Serialized field. Okay, I think this should be working. Defines, uh, yeah, create and we will use public. Why am I using visual scripting? What is going on? Project translation that defines. And here we need a version of the defines. Current version. Or I guess we can just make this an array and get the most, the top version. Here. Current version will be the top version. I guess. I guess the bottom version. It's gonna be the bottom version. It's gonna be the last version. Yeah. If there will be no translation, then we cannot find them. But if there will be any, like any translation, then we will just get the last one. There. So then. We will just create it using this translation. Okay, and here in the app file we need to check that if tr translation isn't equal null, that's when you run this code. And if it's null, then it's, we're just gonna have an empty file. Okie dokie. So now it will absolutely do nothing because it only does this in the background. <laughs> but, but, yeah, now we can actually write the code for the inspector. Because now we have somewhere to save the files. So now when we edit here, we can actually save that to that file. Although the, the file doesn't get saved yet, but it's in the memory. Oh boy. <laughs> You know what? Oh, why did you do that? And uh, do not check this, check this. Uh, aspect ratio, no. Content size fitter and vertical fit will be minimum, minimum, minimum size. Minimum size. We will delete this from here and we'll just add padding to all the sides. Okay, maybe it's a little bit too big. It's gonna be 10. And in here you just have a bunch of different inspectors. So for example, this is the inspector for the normal files because let's not limit ourselves. Maybe we'll use the inspector to like edit. I'm not sure, but you know, let's just keep an open mind. Hmm, I don't think this is a... Hmm. Do you reference content in any way? You do. Oh, that's not good. Let's just do the same thing here. Vertical layout group. Then aspect ratio fitter once again. Oh... Hold up, no, 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 no. It's gonna be mad. Oh yeah, it's gonna be mad, but we do not care. We do not care. Okay, we, we care not. So, entry inspector. And in the entry inspector, we'll just have this thing right here. See, it adjusted automatically. Fantastic. So entry inspector is gonna contain this and we will now have to write Yeah, we'll now have to write it blah, 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 blah. We'll now have to write uh, trans like the, the <laughs> Inspector logic Thank you uh, uh, uh. Entry inspector Just house it in under this nice namespace UI because it's UI. 
And what, we'll just need a reference to the translation manager. If I'm not mistaken, and then we will need to... Oh yeah, and we will need to also... Translation defines display uh, list. Yeah. So we need both of these because from here we will be actually be able to look at the file, and from the list we'll be uh, we'll be able to see what's currently selected. I guess maybe the translation manager should handle what's currently selected. Actually, now what? Yeah, it should probably handle that. Translation defines display. Over here, you can still code for me. Please don't crash. For the love of. Seriously, what's going on? You're right. D display, please. Don't c thank you. Uh, creation manager. Currently selected item is it equal to nil. Hmm. We're gonna delete he this here. And we're gonna reference the... Serialized field translation manager. Oh, I do not have the reference to it, don't I? Using project with translation. Wait, but I should. I don't need this. Okay. Manager. If now all of this selected item talk, we will just. Yeah. We will not call this here, and instead we will have a so uh, instead of this ha housing our value, this will just be like an imposter, I guess, and it's gonna actually run code instead of returning you a value. So when you ask like, hey, what's the value? Then instead of just returning the value, we'll just return this other value. And actually I can just write it like this. And when it asks you, and when it says like, hey, could you please change this value? Then we're not gonna change this value because that value doesn't exist. This is an imposter, but we can change this value and then call on selection change. So then every single thing that's listening uh, for when this selection changes, it will suddenly receive a notification like, hey, it's changed, I need to do something. And it, it will run their code. I guess value here, in this case. Yeah, that's the, that's how it works. <laughs> Selected items, so we do not need this, I guess, now. We'll entry inspector. Awake. Manager. On selection change. Item. Like entry. 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 To lower. What? Entry. What am I doing? I don't need you anymore. So, when the selection changes, we'll just... We need to... Hold up. We need a reference to our inspector, or our uh, field. TMP input field. Like, content field, I guess. Content field dot text. Oh, actually, I think you need to call some stupid thing. Set text without notify. Okay, but now oh, screw it. It's just gonna be this one. If entry contest dot, dot text. We could string it empty and then if. Alright, just, let's just keep it as a variable. String is gonna be equal empty. Huh. Maybe we 
we'll just have like a separate method for cleaning the inspector. Oh no, wait, this kind of doesn't make any sense. If selection changed, connect uh, content text will be equal string empty. And if this entry is not equal null, but also, I guess the app file should contain a list of every single. Oh yeah, that would make sense. So like you could just. Uh, like translation manager would just contain a list of every single entry of sing every single defined entry in this very file and other files. Hmm. Oh, actually, no, never mind. We do not need that. App file. App file. Manager dot file dot entries contains key entry. Yeah, if this is equal to that contains this, then content text will be equal to manager dot file dot entries entry id and we will select the content and then we will just content text will be equal to mm, content text will be equal to this hopefully we run out of battery on the camera which is really sad <laughs> the things we do for coding apps hold up Okay, now it's gonna work. Hello, hello. My name is Green Man on White Man on Green Background, which makes me dream in Minecraft. Wait, will this just work? <laughs> Time to try out. Everything with me always works for the first time. First try. I'm calling it. This is where we house our translation manager. Pin YouTuber, of course I am. It's my only character trait. Okay, now we can reference this translation manager. Do I need to assign anything here? Oh yes, I do. Version. I guess this thing should also stop using its own version, but just use the translation manager version, but who cares. File entries. Wow, I can even view it here. Okay, and here, contact, no, uh, this, entry inspector. Means this, it didn't crash, wow. So hopefully, theoretically, if I did this correctly, maybe, a little bit of luck. And a lot of alcohol, it did not work. Oh, because they do not apply, okay, so it works. But I just, like, this input field doesn't do anything. So it's pointless. On. Va on value changed. Oh seriously, you're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna just, there's no, okay, I guess you're not gonna random, just generate that. Thanks Visual Studio. On, on value changed. Okay, what do you want? On change value, it just, it just wants a string. Text. So, what, what do you want? Oh, it's a, it's a, oh, you got garbage. Add the listener because it's a unity event. Ugh, stupid, I hate that. Okay, Cont uh, so, what this does, every single time we change anything on this field right here, it's gonna call this method, and what this method will do is gonna change it in our file. So, content field. 
To je blbá. Manager. Put file. Like, hold up. If current manager that a selected item is not equal null and manager that selected item or like manager that file that entries that contains key manager that selected item and manager that selected item uh, sorry manager that file that entries and manager that selected file that content will be equal text this should work Okay, good. Hey! It's here. So now, if I were to, if I were to be like a funny man that does translations, I say, "Hey, janitor," and uh, it is useless. And scientist, uh, keycard. Ah, uh, good enough. You can see these things are here, and if I go here, then we can actually view the entries. Holy garbage! PROGRESS! Now we just need to figure out a way to save and then we can work on other features like, you know... Loading... Uh, like loading from this, from whatever this is. And exporting also. Oh, exporting, this is gonna be annoying. Hmm. Actually, exporting might seem seems like a fun idea. I mean, not a fun idea, but like, interesting. Yeah, but the preview here window is probably gonna take the most amount of effort, so for now, let's be happy for with what we have. Actually, you know what? On the top bar, or, hold up, git, upload, panels, add the basic logic, I guess. Already up to date, yeah, whatever, writing objects, removing delta, thank you. What are you reloading? You, I literally did not change Why I hate Unity so much. Why does Unity keep doing this every single time? It is so incredibly annoying. Like, you already had them compiled! Ah... Like every single time you upload to Git, like it's just like oh, I'm gonna uh, uh, reload every single uh, this kid. Uh, <laughs> Literally quoting John Ricatel right now. Reload. What, what is there to reload? What? Okay, great. Thanks Unity. Thanks Unity. We just love Unity. Okay, uh, our current objective: create empty. Uh, main. This is where both of the panels will be housed at. And then on the top, we will add a bar. Bar. Gonna have a height of like 20. Oh, okay, a little bit too small. 40. 35. Sure. And uh, we will just. Yeah, move this by 35 from the top. Mm, time to have find a nice color. Or not a nice color, but this color? Or I don't know. Let's try this one. Looks ugly. Let's try a very light one. Let's try an even lighter one. Stop. Let's try an even lighter one. Ah, no, I just want to add like a button to say like... Uh, <laughs> oh, so I will have a button for saving and loading and exporting. I, I want to have a drop down, like you see the drop downs here, I want to do something like this, but here. But for now it's not gonna be that, for now it's just gonna be really simple buttons. 
Hold up. Horizontal layout group. Middle left. Or left. Middle left. Yeah. Uh, force expand height, but we do not care about the width. <laughs> UI Bran. Where's Bran? Bran. Not drop down. Not yet. Bran. Bran. What is this? I don't know. Why are you not working? I'll send you. Okay. Yeah, great. Thanks, Unity. I love Unity. We love Unity on this channel. Uh, bar uh, top bar button bar button button okay sure and it's gonna we're just gonna make a prefab of it basic top bar button yeah but we need to move the text here I need to remove the background because it's ugly. Okay, overrides apply. Load. So we will have to... Maybe not load. Okay, for now we will have a save which will save our proprietary our proprietary format and we'll have an export button for exporting uh, export for exporting our less proprietary format. Okay, now t so when it gets selected I want a nice tint. Actually hold up. Uh, I think let's just go here, let's see. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just, oh, what happened to my window? Uh-oh. Where am I, what happened to the window? Uh-oh. Let's see, let's see what happens. Firefox. What? Okay, no, I thought the stream crashed. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Like Firefox in the oh boy, yeah, it's it's okay here, but I'm not sure why it died here. Just reopen it again. Colors, sides that Google. I'm just gonna keep copying this and see how it will look. Highlighted color. Uh, that's ugly. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, that's that's a little bit nicer. And pressed button will be can be a little bit lighter. Maybe a little bit lighter. Maybe a little bit lighter. Yeah, I think that's nice. This one is what? Okay. So, now, let's just copy those values. Ah, Unity. What? Are you compiling? We literally just went out of... Ah! What is the point of this? We were literally just playing the game. There was not a single script change outside of the game. What are you compiling? Multiple tasks. Oh, shut up. Uh... Oh, wait, I know. We're in debug mode. That's why everything takes forever. That's another feature which I hate. Uh, to release mode. Can I work now? The answer is not, uh, Unity said.
Okay, selected color is this. Yeah, selected disabled color is. It's the normal color except it's transparent or something or just make it darker slightly. Yeah. Uh, translation zero, this zero, and apply. And I guess we need to make the text black as per usual. Okay, yeah. Export translation, yay. Uh, padding will a spacing of 10. Or maybe not. Actually, I think it's a lot more smarter for, to here to add the spacing here. And here we will do 80, 90, 85. Okay. So these two buttons currently do absolutely nothing, but that's where our job is. Uh, job. Me job, me job. Okay, so if I press save, it should save the current file. So I guess I also will have to add a load function. And here we will have a button just simply titled load. Save, load, export. Normally this will be drop downs, like you will say file, save, file, export. But currently we are at the very early stage of development, so let's just be happy with what we have, shall we? <laughs> okay, so transition manager. This is where saving will be done. Just have a public void save. Whoopsie, that's a bit too, too much. And when we press this app file, the current app file that is loaded will be saved. If app file is equal, no, uh, sorry, file is equal null, then return. I guess we can just do a simple Q oh. Q debug. Uh, cannot save file, file is null. Explanation mark. Look, warning. Yeah. By default, this is gonna be null, or maybe not. It's gonna be null. Okay. File dot. Hmm. How do you save this now? Oh, yeah. We're supposed to be smart. So, normally, when you save in an application, like for example. Uh, Okay, so we want to save this. Okay, hold up. So we want to save this. It's gonna open this window. That's what I want to do. So, Unity, open Windows file prompt, if that makes sense. Open file panel. <gasps> oh wait, that's the editor utility. I want it to be random. What is this? Two thousand. Visual Studio 2003 attack, technical tool. <laughs> Incredible. System diagnosis process start explore the exit select path. Give I need to return something. Open file dialog during rain time. That is literally what I want. What is this page? I have never seen it. Okay, never mind. Check this answer, please see. This what up? Uh This library that wraps the platform APIs. Unity style no file browser. Seems like literally the thing that I want, except it says five years ago, so I don't trust it that much. Hmm. You have a UPM? No, you don't. That's cool. That's stupid. Seems like what I want. Seems literally what. Yeah, seems like what I literally want. Download this thing. Save file. Uh, project uh, Unity packages. What's this?
Import. Hopefully it will work and it'll explode. Please. You will make my day. Ah. Unity file browser. Unity file Bowser. Unity file Bowser. It's not the asset store. It's free. Oh, it's Linux. Okay, maybe not. Uh, maybe it's not doing this file chooser. Chooser. This is. Not only is this like in the application. Not, it will always remain free. Grab it whenever you want. Let's see that it's doing into with its... Dialogue, uh, it's easy. UGY based file browser. Nah, nah, nah. You're doing right now because I forgot. So I'm trying to make this... Like, remember when you said you have this dialogue? I wanted it to appear, but I don't know why. Where did everything go? Nice. Nice, thanks. 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 What what is this garbage? This is this ain't Splatoon. What is this? What is this ain't Splatoon OST? Hold up. Splatoon 2 OST now. Okay. They are saved. Love when that happens. Version control, I don't understand. Oh wait, does everything work now? Okay, let's see. Uh, what was the... What was the... What did they want? A simple file browser. Oh, wait a second. Don't tell me that this is it. Oh no, this is, this is the standalone file browser. Okay, so... No. Okay, so maybe using stun. No. File. No. I. Unit. No. How do you use this? As a standard file browser. Here. Dot CS. It's in system of all things. Okay. Wait, but I do have system. So standalone file browser. <gasps> it works. Incredible. Okay, so if I'm getting this correctly here. Open file panel. Async wow. Title. Uh directory. Oh uh, extensions. Uh, multi-select false it's gonna return strings wow var or debug.log we're just gonna test this because I never used this Okay, so theoretically, if not... Ah! My word boils fell down. Assembly library will not be able to do to errors. Reference has errors. Unity plastic. Why should I care? This Unity plastic, I do not care about that. Yes, I love SPS having pain with 2000 plus hours and my friend which has 6000 hours of holy garbage. And we bored and tired and having suffer. That is a sell for you. Oh wait. Hold up, I'm stupid, I didn't assign it. Shoo 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 shoo. 
Shut up, nobody cares. Maybe if I restart Unity. Oh, why is Unity plastic here? Oh, because it got selected, I don't know. If I restart Unity, it's probably gonna go away, but I, would just, I just want to test this out. Load. Wait, I want save. Okay, save. Mm, ch mm, translation manager. Save. So if I press save, it will open up a dialogue or crush Unity. <gasps> Gents! Wow! Wait, so if I select this. <gasps> That's so cool! Anyways, let's try to restart Unity. Mr. Pissy Pan, nobody cares. Go away. Sure. Sure. Translation Magismo. Okay, so you know how when you... Okay, uh, when you like save a file, uh, it's already like... Sa like if you save a file that is already saved somewhere, so like you update this current save, like it doesn't ask you where to save it, it just saves where it was loaded previously. So yeah, let's do that. So you'll just keep a track of the current file path. Should be equal null. Because we like that. And if it's not gonna be if it's gonna be equal null, then we're just gonna open this garbage. And if it's not gonna be equal null, then yeah. Also, before we do anything, constant public constant string. And here we will save, uh, just uh, save the file type of this file. Fi uh, file extension. Which is gonna be SL translation magismo file. So, now uh, pick save save location how does this application for example do this save as okay i'm also gonna i'm gonna copy save as uh save as this is the directory don't care extension well we're just gonna use the oh hold up how do we do this i use the api Oh, okay, so we're just gonna use the extension app file dot file extension If the file path is equal null then just the file path is gonna be the new save location Actually, I, I'm not sure what happens if you close it like what does it return? Oh, standalone file, standalone file browser samples. Piss off. www is obsolete. Oh, garbage. We do not want this. Yay! The errors, the, the, the voices in it have, have gone away. Actually, hold up. Let's just let's just back this again. Go to length. Maybe if you don't select anything, it will just return zero. And if it will return ze like zero elements, then well, we will just stop saving because it's like you know words. <laughs> if you didn't pick a save location, then I'm gonna save for you. <laughs> Zero. You see, I know, I know me ways around the, the technology. Okay, so var files or like paths. If paths is equal to zero, return, return 
uh, if we only have zero puffs then return if it, and if we don't then just use the first one. Oh boy. Save. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, okie dokie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so now we need to actually do the saving part. So we have the file, so we will need to use QA sick maybe. What uh, how do we want to save this file? I think we'll go with Jason because Jason might be loved. Okay, QASIC time. Using QASIC files. I have no idea what this is. I think it is it's I think that's the signature for sig simple file browser. SFB. Uh. File manager that save file JSON. Path we have the file path and the data will be up file pretty parent yes why not so theoretically this should work theoretically there's a lot of things that would should work theoretically actually hold up it's not open file it's save file panel yes yeah, completely different Default name is gonna be translation. Do I need to write the extension? Probably not. I'm just gonna return a single path. Well, then default. But what are you gonna return if there's nothing? I don't understand. Okay, let's see, sure. We're gonna have to now try, like, uh, cancel the saving. Where will it save? Maybe it will just be empty. Yeah, let's see that. I don't mean the exception, path cannot be empty, string, or all white space. I think this is what it means. So, we will just have to find the location of SL. <laughs> I just the desktop. Hold up. Uh, file manager dot get custom folder path desktop. For now, is the application we should like in the future just detect where you have a cell saved? Still, wait, what? Can I write something correctly again? If pass is equal to null, which is this, it is equal to null by default. Is it not? What? Doesn't make any sense. Okay, we're just gonna check if it is equal to null. If it's not equal to null, then it's gonna... That, that's just stupid. Oh, it's not... But it literally is! What? Ah, you know what? Screw it, just... Is null or white space? There you go. Holy garbage. 
And I guess we can just keep this as default. <gasps> if I close it, what will you say? I will just say empty, okay. Okay then. So we'll just say, but if it still will be null or white space, then we'll just return. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Let's let's make this a little bit tidier. Okay, now. Hopefully I will be able to save this file to the desktop. Desktop. <gasps> Edit with Notepad. Yeah. Oh, the Garbaggio. It actually did it. It worky. Wow. Wow, we saved it. I need to somehow load this. Like, let's say just janitor. Hold up, let's yeah, let's just let's just translate this. Useless and keycard. Scientist keycard in the description will be sort of useless. Okay, okay. Lor, lor. <laughs> so now let's write the load function. Public void load. So. Load. We will need to trigger the standalone file browser window again. But this time it's gonna be load. Uh, open. Open file panel. Yay. Titler. Mm -mm -mm. Titler. Load. Directory. None. Extension filter. App file. File extension. Multi select. No. Var paths. If paths that length is is equal to zero, then it seems like somebody just closed the dialog, so we do not care. But if it's not, then file path is now going to be equal to the first path, which is the only path. Okay, and now we need to actually load it. So file manager does the load file JSON uh, load JSON. Read file JSON. Why is it loads then and it's read the okay I don't care. Path file path object to override file This should work now, probably. You just need to assign it in the bar again. It's the load button and it's gonna load. Uh translation manager load. Did it? It worky. Holy garbage! Okay, but now this is just a proprietary format, so we actually need to export it and load it, and you know. So export, 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 Xbox, export live. Mm -mm -mm. So once again, there will be a function for exporting public void export. And there is also going to be a function for importing. I think. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. I Yes, that will be a thing. But for now, it's not. We're not gonna do that today because I'm crazy. Var. Paths. Just 
Stun down five browser dot save. I want to save a file. I want to. I guess it should be open folder panel now. Oh yeah, yeah. Export directory none. Which how do I detect this? Oh, where do I have the, the folder with the translations? Here, how do I detect this folder? Where is it stored? Program files, Steam, Steam apps, come on, this is this. I mean, I could try to default to this one, but... Hmm. Yeah. Like, I cannot search with the entire computer, but at least I can just, like, try going to default install location for all files. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, but that's... That for now, it's just gonna be empty. Multi select false. Oh, keyboard. Stop that. If paths to the length is equal to zero, then once again, somebody counts the deduction, so we do not care. Well, if it is not, then this time we do not say file path. We do not set it, because we don't want to set it, we're just exporting. So, then to that folder... File path, uh, no, what am I doing? Oh boy, we actually need to export, that is gonna be a little bit more complicated. Because exporting, will, we will actually need to use all of this information now. So for each bar item in current ver version that defines this is all of the different files that are saved. Like if I were to look, take a look at here, all of these different files. Yeah, these are our defines. So we need to look through all of them and then save them in their pro in their format. Okay, so we will do once again. Hold up, file. And the, oh, the way the second does make sense. Oh, I guess it doesn't. We do not care. Or does it? Uh, defines file. Yeah, and then in here we will look for every single like entry in. Yeah, this is gonna be all of the different items. And after we're done with this, now we can actually try exporting them. Paths to the length. Like paths. <laughs> Let's have this defined here so I can think clearer. Okay, so if it's line ID sensitive, then we... Oh, that does make sense. Oh, ha ha ha. <laughs> okay, so we just look for every single define and then we add it to a file. So, string builder, we will need to make a string build, a string build. How do you do this? I, oh, yeah, hold up. Using system.text. Yes, that exists. String builder, uh, file text. File content. Def defines file content. Equal to a new string builder. Okay, so now if we were to look for every single one of these, what do we need to do? Okay, file name. No, what am I doing? Okay, so now I know. Append, append. And you append what? All of the different fields using the separator. So here we'll just do string to join using the defines file that separation character and as the things that need to infuse with each other, we'll just do field IDs.
Oh no, we just couldn't. No, we cannot use field IDs. Oh, so we need to get. Uh, hold up, what? Var. Try. Or like. Yeah, string. Value. No, it's gonna be a single value, it needs to be values. Okay, string. Values. So, we will just look at this item and it defines uh, field IDs. So. Field IDs. So these are just the IDs. These are the things that we use in our application. This is what this application understands, but uh, this SL won't understand it. So we need to look for all of it and get the proper file for, for our app file. So we just go here and we just... Oh, hold up. We, I need to link you. So we just go for every single one of these field IDs and then we ask the file Hey, file, do you contain, do you, do you have, uh, where? do you have a, yeah, can, can you give us the value for the field ID that we have currently here? So, we'll just do file dot, try, uh, dot uh, ent entries dot try get value. And right here, we'll show it the key. And if we're lucky, we'll be able to get the value. So if we did, if it if it has that value, we will use that value. And if it doesn't, well, we will just leave it empty. Simple as that. What are you smoking? Oh, hold up. Uh, yeah. Like just var. Yeah, that's how we fix that. Here we use various and it's going to work. Because of course it's going to work because I am doing this. However... As you might remember, sometimes we use identification. Yeah, if we have this right here set to first item, then we also... Oh boy, how do I do this now? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, I got it, I got it. So, we will just do a switch right here. Item that I... Uh... Wait, no, no, no. Defines file identification type so by default which is gonna be zero line id well we're just gonna do what we did here and that's it our job is done but in the case that we are actually looking for this first item like an example items here so it actually cares about this number well then we will care about what is in a file id so then, instead of doing this, we'll just do something similar. And we'll append this, except that now here, we'll add our... separation character. We will add it once again here, except that here we will add the uh, ID, the file ID right here. What is it file ID? It will be line ID. I'm gonna just change it. Okay, line ID. Item dot line ID. So in the case of items, well, it's gonna it's gonna just save it with a zero. Hopefully this will work. And now after we're done with all of this, we just create our file which is right here. And I guess you're saying to append new line. There we go. So once we're done with this file, we need to save it now. So file manager dot save file writer which is just saving the text in its plain format and for the path we will choose mm -mm, the paths the, the first path which is the only path that gets selected and we're gonna go through yeah and uh, if you remember every single one of these files it has a file name so we'll just use that Or is it defines file dot file name? And for our content, we will just use this define files content dot to string, which will just build all of the things that we did here into just a simple txt file. Hopefully, this will work, but practically it won't. 
fire path. Oh, that's just, yeah, I don't care about that. Export. Will this work? Good. And now technically on my desktop there should be a folder named G. Not what I was looking for, but it was quite close. We still need to say... Sorry, no. We need to load this file that we have here, which contains a lot of our translations. And then we, when we export it to G, this time... It was really close. It's really close because I remember when I uh, renamed uh, this from file ID to line ID. Uh, well, now it's all messed up our settings, so we need to go back to the translation defines line ID here. It's gonna has, this has to be zero and this has to be one. So now. If we save it, and when we export it, it should work. Hopefully. Not save, I need load. We load the translation, we export the translation to G. Gents, we have done it! We have done it! Holy garbage, I've... That is, that is progress. But as you might have noticed, I still cannot import this file. Like, if it's exported, it's done. Like, I cannot import it. And, if you've also noticed, translation defines, like, I need to fill all of this, and this is just only one file. And we have so many of them, and so many different settings. And we need to define every single one of them. Oh boy, but this is, this is progress. Actually, maybe we can try importing this time. We could try importing. I don't know, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated because... Oh, we cannot save this. No, 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 we can, we can. Huh. Because now when we're importing, then instead of just having all of the different IDs and trying to get the value of them, we have all of the values and we need to, we need to figure out which IDs should they receive. So, firstly, once again, we'll just do this. Also, did, did I see that correctly or should we just leave this empty? Yeah, it looks better like this. So, uh, now. We need to look for every single file. Oh no, we will just have to do what we did here. Except not really. Because we're not gonna use a string builder because we're not building anything. Yeah, instead, instead of saving it after we're done with everything, we will need to first load it. Load file writer. Var txt. So this is our file. This is all of the content, and then we need to figure out, hey, how do we, how do we actually load this in? How do we populate, uh, uh, populate our file? So now file. But entries. Entry entry. If file dot entries does not contain the key that we are currently looking for. I guess hold up. Uh, yeah, if file.entries, if it doesn't contain this ID, we need to add it.
add ID and then new here ID. Yep, that's pretty much it. And now we can get into the loading part, which is gonna be quite difficult. Oh boy, how do we actually do this? So, once again, we'll do a switch. Or depending on how the file identifies the different lines, and different entries, then we're gonna do things differently. By default, we're gonna do this, but in the case, if we're just yeah, if, if, it's the f if it's this file, where it's, you can see the number, then we need to figure this out. Huh. Actually, do we also need to look for every item? Mm -mm -mm. No, no. We do not need to look for every single, like, uh, field ID. No, no, we do not. Okay, so we will take a line. Ha <laughs> ha, actually, you know what? I don't think it's a good idea to do a for each here. I think I need a for. Because if with four, you can actually get the idea of the number, which is something I will need. count and now here we will just define our item what do you want? that makes sense find the defines Yes, it does. What do you mean? Oh, hold up. Yeah, zero. <laughs> uh, no, I don't do that. Okay. I. So yeah, this this is just gonna return the current uh, define that we're looking for. Let's, let's just rename it define. Let's let just keep consistency here. Actually, no, it's screwed. This is also gonna be called the define. So once it's defined, if it's doing this by default, then... txt, the line... get line... oh, okay. you know what? Here, txt, we're just gonna split it by dash n, unless these files... Nice! Uh, hold up, I need to open one of these files... English. I need to open it, open it, open it. Where is the items? Settings, language, encoding. Where is this? Here is a VTuber. Of course I am. If you actually, you know what? I think I should just start charging cam. The battery, because from what I'm seeing right now, this is gonna take quite a while. Hold on, I'm gonna plug it into the power supply. I guess I can also disable the lights. Yeah, I'm gonna save the planet. Uh, view, show symbols, show all characters. Oh, it's this garbage. Okay, then. I'm just gonna replace dash r dash n. Can I replace like not a char but a string? Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's split to array. Cool. So now txt. Like txt lines, it should be now called. So, uh,. Yeah, if we are just looking for the line, which in here, uh, yeah, search by line index. We're looking just by line, then we'll just see if this contains the line index. If it doesn't, then we'll just give up. In uh, index in range i. If it is in range. Or actually no, if it isn't in range then break. 
But if it is in range, in, in, in range, so this actually exists, then you can try loading it in somehow. How? <laughs> I'm incredible at my job, aren't I? What is it? What is this by default? It's no number. <laughs> huh, I guess I will have to add like a public bool use separation character. Should I? I know what, maybe not. I have an idea. Or maybe not. I, my brain is melting. I said, why do you use 20 different file formats? It's so annoying. It's so annoying. I mean, th th I wouldn't have to write this application if you actually had normal file formats. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Like, how do we know that we should split with the character? Or actually, maybe let's just split with the character, and if it's not gonna be equal... Can char be equal to null? No, it cannot. It has to be something. But if I think it's a space, which is a very, very bad idea. We, not, we do not want that. Because we do need a bool. Bool. Use separation... Use separation character. Okay, so if we're using, if we're not using, if we're using the separation character, and I guess in here we're gonna have another switch, this is gonna be a mess. Uh -huh. Maybe here there should be a switch, like over this? Okay, so tr true. In case false. So if we're using this is gonna be a mess. I mean as it is a mess. Yeah, we're just gonna break this and we do not care. If this is gonna be this then okay. Um uh, file if we're using the separation character then depending on let's say that yes then var separated line we will be equal to lines or like hold up this I need to check for this which line do we know to use? No, hold up, this is stupid. Because we need to know which line to use. So it has to be inside of this. This is really complicated. My brain is actually just halting. No, it ju it just stops. It ju it just stopped right now. I cannot think. It's probably really simple to do. I can't. Okay, so if we are identifying by line ID, then 
if this is in range we have the line okay then we need to split the line bar uh, split line will be equal to txt lines i dot split defines file dot separation character then file dot entry a no the fine yeah define dot fields var item in yeah item uh, no file dot entries item or should I do four maybe I should do four or math dot minimum whatever is smaller either define dot field IDs or split split line dot length so in I'm doing this because like you know if if there would be only one like entry in the SL file but I need three then well we can only load one so what's the point but if the SL file is going to have three and I only have one, then what's the point of iterating for the rest of them? So we're just going to pick the minimum value. Oh, we already use E, I, don't we? We have X. Oh, you know it's getting it's getting hardcore if you're using X. No, 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 no. Define dot field ids dot x will be equal to split line dot x what's the point oh i need to convert this to a new app file dot entry data Define dot field IDs. This is this is what we call a mess. Wait, but oh, and okay, I guess that makes sense. File dot entries. Define dot field IDs. Zero will be equal to txt lines i. Oh, I need to do the update on app file file dot entry data define dot field ids. This is one of the parts of the code that we'll just write once and never touch again in our entire life. Okay, but if we do identify by the first item, then that's where the stairs happen. That makes sense? Open those. Oh, we do not need this one because we will identify the line by the thing that it starts with. Thing. Ah. Uh, wait, but won't that just do the same thing? Oh, wait. Boy, this will literally do the same thing. I am so stupid. Hold up, no, wait. Oh yeah, this will literally do the same thing. But the difference is in how we identify the first line. So we'll just do var line, which will be equal to defines identification type, and depending on the identification type. Or, hold up. Fine. Yeah, so if... Oh no, hold that, that doesn't make any sense. String, which will be... Uh, yeah, which will be equal to null. If this will be equal to null, then we'll just continue. I guess... Oh, we don't actually need to define this. Just in here, if the txt line is in range... If it is in range, then we'll just continue. If it is in range, then line will be equal to txt 
lines dot 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 i. Yeah, so we'll just pick if we're searching by index, then we'll just pick the line. And if we're not searching by index, then we will just try doing this little tomfoolery thingy thingy. We'll just take all of the txt lines. And we will say select the lines that start with here we will do uh, 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 uh. I'm starting to notice, I'm starting to like wonder if instead of identification time, instead of having just light ID at first time, it will be like line ID. Like this should define like how the line is, not only how we def we find the line, but also how it is defined, because not all lines have the separation thingy thingy. Ah, you know what, we'll just do it. It's gonna be junk for now. We'll fix it later. That's, that's what I say. Starts with, and now we need the identification, which we can find by define.line ID. And then we need the separator. Separ. Sep. Se Come on. Se define the sep. The defines file. The defines file. The separate. Separ. Separation character. If txt lines dot length hold up var uh, target lines if target lines would be the count if there would only be if there would be zero then we will just say you know what skip this line we cannot load it but if that will not be the case then line will be equal to target lines dot first we'll just pick the first one because the, there's a because you know someone could just go here and just duplicate this for no reason so we're just gonna load the first one on the list mm -hmm. yeah and instead of doing whatever this is here we'll use our line and instead of this, because we do not care about this anymore, things still I. Uh, okay. Hopefully we will be able to import it and nothing will light on fire. Hopefully. Maybe. I hope so. Oh, I don't have an import button. <laughs> <laughs> okay, time to duplicate it and now instead of experts gonna say import. There we go. Instead of saying export, it's gonna call the import method. I did not even press a button. <laughs> See how great it works. Okay, we need to load this here. Huh. You see, it sort of worked. Why? Wait, did it just do this? Use separation character. <gasps> I did not select that. <laughs> okay, now it should now it should work. Once again, it just pressed the button for me. I don't trust you. Uh -oh. oh, okay. So if we find this line, we'll select the first, but var starts with text.
Okay, so we will just need to... You see this line? It still has the uh, thing that we just use for identification, so we need to get rid of it. So, we're just gonna... Oh, what am I doing? We do not need this. So, we will do sap or with... Remove... Remove zero and the length. Okay, so we will just remove the beginning portion. Now it should work properly. And also, let's just modify our English translation with items. Uh, general turkey card. Oh, hold up, you know what? I can just load the trans like a custom translation I have here. Now it should say operation guide in all of them, which is a very bad way of identifying it, but you know what, we'll just go with it. Operation guide. <laughs> it's worky. Holy garbage. So pretty much, this is the bare minimum right here. We just need to define every single file and every single line, uh, every single line and every single file and every single everything, and it'll actually work. Gents, this is huge. I am surprised we were able to get this far on the stream. But you know what, uh, for today, I'm streaming for four hours almost, so for today, we are gonna call, that is not the, no, 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 we're gonna call it a day for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a little bit different. Not sure if I will do this again. That was fun. It would be like a traditional. Pro no, probably not a tradition to do it on Tuesday because I will definitely not have time on Tuesday. Maybe on the weekends. We'll see. Anyways, farewell. Thank you for stopping by. Goodbye.